Awesome. Uh, let me bring up the GitHub issue. So this is probably the cornerstone of our V1 is this minimal Python SDK. Um, so today, we basically got one repository in open hands, and it has all the things. It has all the logic for driving our agent forward. Um, it has a whole web server for working with the agent, a whole React front end for working with the agent, a CLI for working with the agent, um, all of our runtime logic, et cetera. And so uh, it's a very large repo. Uh, our Docker image is like eight and a half gigabytes, something like that. Uh, if you try to pip install our CLI, it's like several gigabytes of data and takes like five minutes to install. Uh, it's all just too much. Uh, and this code base has like just grown organically over the last 18 months with you know 400 different people contributing. Like there's just it's a lot of craft here. And so um, we really want to uh, rebuild a, a good foundation that will set us up for the future, right? Um, and so we've spec'd out what we're calling our agent SDK. Um, and the idea is there's something super lightweight with very few dependencies uh, that can allow you to drive an agent forward with all of our you know best in class logic for running software development agents. Um, and so you can see like some very basic hello world example code here. Uh, you know, you create an LLM, you define a tool call, it's just a Python function. Um, and then you can start an agent, you know, give it, uh, give it a quick prompt, uh, and it'll use the tools at its disposal to do this thing. Uh, we are going to include separate from the main package, but in the same SDK repository, a bunch of default tools. Uh, it's not a bunch of default tools, really like some default tools for like browsing. Uh, and or, uh, sorry, I don't think we're, I think we're going to use browser use MCP for browsing, but at least for um, uh, executing uh, bash scripts and file uh, file editing um, so that you can have like a, a MVP agent. We'll have first class support for MCP in here as well. Uh, I think I have an example, maybe not. Um, yeah, yeah, I can have a real example later. Yeah, cool. Um, meeting here is just like a super simple way to drive agents forward. We'll factor this out into its own repo. And then we'll become clients of this uh, with our CLI and our server. We'll use this under the hood to actually manage agents. Um, any questions there? Well, I think the big thing to keep an eye out for is that there are going to be some breaking changes in the way that like we serialize agent sessions. Um, so you won't be able to like use old conversations with new open hands. Um, there are going to be some changes in um, uh, probably the CLI and web APIs will stay the same. Um, config changes are probably going to take place. So any of your like Tunnel configurations, et cetera, might get harder to manage, or you might need some some breaking changes there. I think we still haven't uh, figured out exactly what the migration path looks like from V0 to V1, but um, uh, stay tuned for that. Xingyao, do you want to give uh, a tour of the SDK uh, as it lives today? Yeah, sure. Uh, let me share my screen. So can you all see my screen? Yep. Yep. So basically, I can quickly go through like the proposed folder structure for the CLI. So basically, now everything is like we are using UV for package management this time. So no more poetry. And then in, in the CLI, you basically see like there is a bunch of like simple examples like the, the, the screenshot Gruber just shared. And then for SDK, we actually have like two packages. One be like the SDK and the other one to be tool. So we decided to put like tools like execute batch and stream replace editor into its own package so that if your changes doesn't really touch like these tools, like we don't really need to run tests for that because that's like that's slowing, that's the main bottleneck for our V1 like CI is the, the tool test. And then within, within SDK, we basically have like agents, config, we have the concept of like contacts, conversation, events. I'll talk more about this in like a whole lot of examples. And then basically to set up this CLI is like really easy. If you want to develop it, just click on and then do a make build. And then the Hello World example, this is something that Robert has shown. And then this is the actual version we are using in development. For query concept, we have like the agent concept. It's like the central orchestrator that coordinate between like the language models and tools, probably not conversations. So you just need to pass in like a language model as well as the uh, tools. For LM integration, it's similar. We also have an LM registry, although I imagine most of the people who are using SDK directly won't really need it. It's basically for you to manage like a different LM instances and aggregate costs among all of them. And then for tools, we have like a simple patterns. For example, we have some predefined tools like Robert mentioned, which is like the essentials like batch execution and file editor. And by the way, right now the batch uh, support both Tmux and machines without Tmux. For example, if you have like a, a through sub process, and then both of those implementation have like the, the advanced support for interactive batch commands. So basically, the agent can just go into the interactive Python and interact with the shell instead of like uh, getting timeout and stuck there. 
And then for a more advanced pattern, you can actually explicitly define a batch executor and then pass the batch executor to the execute batch tool. And then we can later reuse this row like executor to define your own custom, for example, uh, custom tool. For example, here I'm defining a custom tool called like grab. And then what I do is like, I just need to define the action, like the action, the observation, as well as how I want to execute it. And when I execute it, I simply reuse the batch executor here to pass a batch command into this executor and then get back my result and parse it into my own type of like grab observation. And then for conversation, we basically have like two main APIs, like send messages and run. Basically, when you send a message and then the conversation, the agent is not going to do anything. And then when you do like conversation dot run, the conversation will start running until the agent enters a await user input state. And finally, for context management, as a lot of people are, uh, are aware, we have the concept of the micro agent in V1, oh, sorry, in V0. And then V1, we sort of like aggregate all these type of things that are put, that are, that are going to be put into the context of the agent under this agent context. So it supports basically three arguments. The first one is like micro agent. You can pass in a bunch of like repo micro agent, not a micro agent. And you can also uh, specifically define like system message suffix and user message suffix. And to get started, I guess I can do a quick uh, demo of the micro agent. Uh, yeah, basically you can see like the the system message suffix is injected after the uh, it's injected after the system message. And here is the content of like the repo MD, which is like the repo micro agent we just defined. And then and then yeah, are you a grumpy cat? And then the extended content here is that is the user message suffix we just defined. And then, yeah, this is like how it works. And then in this PR branch, we also do support MCP. I can actually show the, the code for MCP. It's extremely simple. So we decided to go with like this very common like MCP JSON format config. And then what we're gonna, what we really need to do is like just passing this MCP comment into this create MCP tools from the SDK that will gives you a, a bunch of like MCP tools with the pre-configured like uh, executor. And then you're you're simply extending the list of tools you're defining. For example, previously you have batch and file editor. Now you just extend these tools with MCP with the tools you got from MCP, and then pass this to the to agent, and that's it. So I can oh I can I can run that too. Uh, do a demo of that. Oh no, that's not not really like me. As you can see here, we see like there is an additional fetch tool being added to the system message. And then the agent is able to use that fetch tool to call like uh, to create uh, like fetch actions and fetch content from like the open hand repo. And here are like basically at the MCP tool results from that fetch observation. And then you can see it's like uh, using this fetch tool in like an iteration and then gather enough information and then use the file editor tools and then basically create this fetch.txt. And yeah, that's basically that's basically everything I have to show today. Cool. Thanks, Xinyang. Thank you. Uh, do we have any questions about this? Uh, anything that Robert talked about or Xinyang talked about, feel free to drop in the chat or unmute. Can I give a couple seconds for that? Yes. Yeah, I, I just want to say, like, one of the things I'm most excited about for this is that it'll make it super easy to plug this into, like, other things that you want to do with open hands agents. So like up until now, it was just really hard to use open hands as a library, but like using open hands as a library will get a lot easier now. So um, I'm very, very excited about that. Yes, do you have a question? Yeah, so I have a question. So um, currently open hands is primarily used for coding purposes. So when it's available, like when it's possible to be retrieved from the SDK, is it possible that it can be extended to perform tasks other than coding? Yeah, absolutely. The agent SDK as it, on its own doesn't really um, have any coding specific logic in it, right? It's really just an agent. Mm -hmm. uh, there are any tools you want at it. Um, we have seen people use open hands as it is today for non-coding tasks. Um, I think it, it is really helpful, even if you've got an agent doing like document extraction or something like that, to give it that batch runtime and like really give it all the all the things it might ever need to do. Um, you know, giving it the ability to like run, write and run code uh, can be really helpful for whatever task it wants to accomplish. So um, yeah, I would say there's definitely uh, a lot of room to use this for generic tasks. Okay, so basically this SDK can be treated as a generic uh, boilerplate as a framework for agent tech application. Right. right. Is this what it was, okay, got it. 
I think the best way to think about it is if you want to compare it with something like Langchain. Um, Langchain, the idea is you string together a bunch of like weaker agents into like a, a larger agentic system. That's not really what we're aiming for here. We're aiming for this to be like one really good agent that can do lots of things depending on like the tools that you provide to it. Mm -hmm. um, and by default, it'll be good at editing files and running commands, which makes it a good coding agent. But you can also throw in a web browser if you wanted to read web content, or you can throw in an MCP that interacts with linear if you wanted to read through all your linear tickets and go in and resolve them or something like that. So um, like by default, good at coding, um, additionally, possibly good at like lots of other things if you give it the tools it needs to do those other things.